Activision presents a smashing blast from the past. Yep, a smashing blast from the past indeed. Yes. Developed by vicarious visions. Vicarious visions are the vision. I will say that much. It's Crash Bandicoot. Yes, it is indeed. And I do indeed like this introduction. I think it is really good. And I like the way that they've modelled uh, the old Crash Bandicoot as well. And look at that. Brand spanking new Crash. And it is none other than the Insane Trilogy. Hello all you fellow musicians and gamers, this is Quiet Gamer here. And yes, I know I don't usually do my trademark intro right at the very... I usually do that right at the very beginning. But I think in this case, to build up the hype, I thought I would do it right in the, about in the middle there. But I must be honest guys, this is my second attempt at recording this, as you can probably tell because I have a continue file there. The reason why is because I recorded up to an hour of this, I thought I had recorded up to an hour of this on my PS4, but for some reason my PS4 did not decide to save it, the, the gameplay footage. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to record this in 20 minute parts uh, for up to an hour, so there'll be three 20 minute videos uh, coming up, uh, coming your way. So I'm going to start a new game without further ado, and I like how in this, Starting a new game over at the old save slot, and yes, no memory cards are available in this. Absolutely no memory cards. So I'm going to overwrite the save. And without further ado guys, it is going to load up the introduction if I remember correctly, and I will be quiet when the introduction appears. But Dr. Cortex, we haven't determined the cause of past failures. <laughs> Moron! This bandicoot will be my general. He will lead my Cortex commandos to world domination. This time, I shall reign triumphant. <laughs> we are closer than ever before. Quickly, into the vortex! <laughs> Dr. Cortex, the Vortex is not ready. We have no idea what it could do. <laughs> Failure again. <laughs> Capture him. Prepare the female bandicoot. And it was just as brilliant as it was a PSX in 2016, that's all I can say. But I do know what happens uh, in this game up till Native Fortress, that's when I don't know what happens. Because I played through the first eight levels on my first attempt at this. So... And I, and I like the look of this at first level already. I mean, I still do, guys. I mean, like, I'm still very impressed with what Vicarious Visions have done here. Now, I know you can use the analog sticks here to move Crash about, but I think it's more comfortable in the platforming levels, at the very least, to use the directional pad. And I was going to spin that crab, but for some reason I jumped on them. But anyway. So I am very impressed so far with what Vicarious Visions... Can't even speak properly. I am so impressed with what Vicarious Visions have done so far with the Insane Trilogy here from what i played so far. I mean, I am genuinely impressed. I have nothing very bad to say about the game besides the fact that the jumping is something that needs to get a little bit used to, I think. On my part, I think it's something that needs to get used to, I think. But other than that, no. Nothing really negative to say about this so far. I mean, so far, I really think this is very good. I mean, the controls are very fluent, I think. In this one, at the very least. That's what I'd expect from a remaster, anyway. And, of course, I'm going to get the box gem in this. And when it comes to the relics, guys, I might as well announce this. I'm, I'm not going to be getting the relics in the main Let's Play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get them in a bonus parts after I've done Crash Bandicoot 1. So, like, once I've done the main story of Crash Bandicoot 1, gone 100%. I will then get the relics because from what I understand, I don't think the relics count towards 100%. As you'll see in the completion screen uh, coming up here and the gems look a lot bigger than what they were before which is uh, impressive. Because I remember in the beta build-ups uh, they were pretty small. So there's no relics 
on that screen right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, end up. Oh, okay, right. Sorry, I was looking at my computer there because it crashed. Like, eh, what are you waiting for? Press X. I'm like, yeah, I know crash. But I'm just looking at my computer right now because Audacity seems to be lagging for some reason when it comes to my commentary. But it seems to be fine though. I'm not for some reason whenever I'm not running anything in the background when it comes to Audacity. For some reason, it ends up lagging. I don't know why it ends up doing that. Maybe I may need to update the software perhaps on Audacity. Or download a new version perhaps but anyway enough about audacity let's get back to the insane trilogy now i did post up a picture on instagram earlier uh, saying i'm gonna lock myself in an insane ins asylum when playing this i thought yeah i might as well use that nobody has used that pun yet so might as well use it i know very very predictable pun i know but at the same time though i i quite liked it i thought it was pretty clever now jungle rulers i like what they have done with this level a lot like, I remember in an early build-up of this level, they, I think they did the release date trailer for this, and, uh, like, it looked pretty good already in the early build-up, but the final product here looks pretty amazing, if you ask me. The skunks look a lot more detailed as well, because I remember in the original Crash, and on PS1, like, the skunks didn't really have a face on them, it was just more like a, just black and white, it didn't really have a face on them. Only if you ever played the beta levels in the original Crash, in Crash, like in the Crash Prototype, for instance, is where you saw their faces. Now, I might as well show off the Tona, Tona bonus round. Even though I'm not going to be able to get all the boxes in this level, I might as well show off what the Tona bonus round is all about. Now, can I pull this off? Aha! Yes! It takes a really precise jump right there, and a really precise movement to... Honestly, see that plant right there? The plant's just like, eh, I don't care, he jumps on me. I don't care, I'm just going to lose it on my life. Fair enough, plant. Do you, you don't want to take a bite of the delicious bandicoot? Fair enough. Well, I mean, mind you, though, it is Crash Bandicoot. He, he does spin quite a lot, so he will spin inside your stomach. So that's probably why the plant was very hesitant to eat him. But anyway, <laughs> so let's talk about Tona's uh, bonus, to, uh, bonus round series. You can see the box count here does count towards the box gem in each level here. I know, oh, Cortex steals my girl. How dare you, Cortex? That's my girlfriend. Or Crash's girlfriend. Not my girlfriend, personally, but... Hey, I, I'd be lucky if, if that was my girlfriend, personally, but... <laughs> but, anyway, enough about that. But I look, I, I like all the lush wildlife they've done around here. I mean, I just taking in... If you've taken all the, the details and everything that they've put into this, it's amazing. Right, final plan, final obstacle. And we are done with Jungle Rollers. So the plan for the relics is I'm going to do them in a bonus part or bonus montage, should I say, and a lot of bonus parts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, viewers to interact with the video is by posting their best times in the comments down below. I might see some people, uh, some uh, some of my friends' times in the leaderboards, but what I might do is uh, I'll maybe let you guys comment down below where your best times are. Obviously not now in this part, but like in the future parts when it comes to the relics, that's when I'll let you guys comment down below for what your best times are. So now let's go to the Great Gate. Now the Great Gate, uh, now from what I've played in my first attempt, the level looks really good. It really does. Although I will say this much though, one of the enemies in this, the tribesmen with the shields, I have no idea why, but they seem to be really awkward to defeat for some reason in this. I have no idea why. Maybe it might just be me. And yes, I, I like how the game gives you the hints and tips as well, especially, well, I mean, I know I don't need them personally because, I mean, I played the originals, but for those who are new to the game, it's very handy. So that's why. And I like how, as well, yeah, I know, I'm overlapping one mode, so I might as well finish my point, but it's uh, good for the future generation, right? Get that life, there we go. It's good for the future generation or the new generation that, that are playing Crash Bandicoot right now. Uh, hopefully a lot of uh, children are playing Crash Bandicoot right now and they're uh, experiencing what we experienced back in the 90s because uh, then more more than likely we'll probably get a new Crash Bandicoot game in the future. Oh, and that plant take a bite, tried, did try to take a bite out of me. I remember last time I recorded this, the, the plant didn't try to take a bite out of me because I was invincible and I thought, hmm, either that plant is smart or he's trying to save his own life, I don't know. Alright, just wait for that. There we go. And the fire in this is very detailed as well on that platform. Alright. I might as well, you know what, I'll show off the Tona bonus round again. Why not? Might as well do it again. Okay, so here we go. And see the, the amount of details that they put in this bonus round. It is amazing what they have done here. Like the trees and everything is just fantastic. 
honestly, I'm, I'm just I'm speechless on what they've done here. And yeah, I'm speechless once again because Cortex has once again kidnapped Tana. How do you do that, Cortex? Like, seriously, how on earth do you do it? Are you the master of sneaking, perhaps? Okay, and I can't get the box gem yet because I've got to get the yellow gem from the lab. And I will have missed eight boxes. And Crash is like, huh? Huh? Where are the other boxes? Where are they? Ah, never mind. I like how they do the different animations, like, uh, for every time, like, I think you go in, every time you go into a decade for each box, uh, for the amount of boxes you've missed, a different animation is done every time for Crash. Unless if it goes to 30 plus, that's when it stays the same animation. Obviously, I'm not going to do this on purpose uh, to show that off because I want to collect all the boxes. I want to get all the gems I can possibly get. So anyway, speaking of which, boulders, break all the boxes in the level to earn a clear gem, and I will do that. And Aku Aku... Honestly, you see, every time like, I see Aku Aku in that loading screen, it looks like he's given the people's eyebrow. I don't know if he's secretly the rock. Imagine that. I'm just trying to think of some good uh, rock quotes right now to... Uh, associate with Aku Aku. I can't think of any right now off the top of my head. Maybe some people in the comment section down below might come up with some uh, good quotes right there uh, to uh, cross-reference Aku Aku with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Nah, I, I don't know. Maybe it might just be me and my imagination, but that's what I in interpret it as. The soundtrack for this as well is amazing. As well, and uh, Crash is a terrified look on his face right now, running away from the boulder, and they've really captured that. And, oh god! Okay, I actually thought I was going to die to the boulder right there. That would have been quite embarrassing if I had died on boulders. Because I had never usually die on boulders. I would have gone, oh, boulder dash, I died. No, wrong level. That that happens on the second island. <laughs> oh, I'm just enjoying this so far. I mean, I know I'm redoing this, but... It's good that I'm redoing it anyway, because, I mean, I think I approached this, uh... This let's play all wrong anyway. And we're done. I'll let that boulder fall down, and we're done with boulders. So that's the second clear gem, and if you notice it's gone up by 7%, so I'm assuming every level you complete, it'll go up by a certain amount of percentage. So you see, I got 3% already from getting a clear gem. That was never in the original. I think the game is far more generous of giving percentage rather than the original. Like, the, the, orig the remaster is far more generous of giving percentage. Or more percentage, should I say, than the original game. And I pre-ordered this as well from Game. Uh, the game store that, that I have in the UK, it's just called Game. It's never really fancy to it, but it's, a, it's still a great shop though. But I, I actually uh, pre-ordered it from Game and uh, I got a Aku Aku keychain with it as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get any uh, codes or anything to get any of the themes. So I won't have uh, had any codes or anything to get any of the themes or avatars, which is uh, kind of sad. But still though, I got something with the pre-order, which was good. Plus, you know, the remastered treatment of Crash Bandicoot Dance and Trilogy, so that's all that matters. Now, upstream, I remember seeing a build-up of this level in a video I saw back in, I think, was it March, I think? It was about three months ago, I think, I saw this. Or was it... Yeah, I think it was March. That I saw, like, an early build of this level, and I remember the checkpoint font right there used to be red, for some reason, instead of orange. Don't know why, but I guess it was their build-up there. Now I'm hoping as well, uh, in this part, I'll get to Rolling Stones at the very least and show off the Brio bonus round. Because I know a lot of people said that they were dreading the Brio bonus round. Oh god! Did that plant foresee my movement there? Because that ended up closing his jaws like a little bit too soon, or maybe it, it saw me coming. I was like, ah, it's crash. Meal time. So like, right there. I've no idea why. Maybe that plant is smarter than all the other plants in this. Okay, right, bonus time once again. And I like how in this one as well, if you do end up dying in the bonus rounds, you do get another opportunity to try again. So that's something that, that that's always good. And I'm just going to see if I can get every box in this. And I do. So, so far, so good. And again, my audacity was kind of lagging again a little bit, but... That should be fine uh, when it comes out in the final uh, recorded uh, product here, when I upload it. I think what I'll do, guys, is if I get up to Papu Papu, 
that's when I'll stop the uh, the first part because I think that'll be appropriate to stop the first part right there is when I finish uh, the Papu Papu boss. Plus, something I want to explain as well when I finish Papu Papu as well that I'll conclude off in, in the first part. Uh, that'll be unlocked after the Papu Papu boss, which I'll explain later. So anyway, we're going back to the Wumpa Islands. And when we're ready, we'll get to Papu Papu. Here we are. Now one thing in the Papu Papu boss has changed, and you'll see... Pardon me. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so uh, him, body blows don't hurt him. Yeah, of course they don't. Papu Papu looks pretty good in this, I must say. For the remaster, although he's not my favourite character design. Now, if you look, he's got more health points in this. And I've already hit him once. And I'm glad that they've added more hit points onto Papu Papu, because honestly, like, having Papu Papu with three hit points was far too easy. Plus, you didn't get to hear the epic music that Papu Papu has. Uh oh If I get hit by Papu Papu, that's going to be pretty humiliating. I, I never get hit by Papu Papu. Oh, right, okay. Now, I don't think he gets faster in this, which is a bit disappointing. I would have thought that Papu Papu would have made faster movements. And that's done. And I like the, the pose that Crash makes after he defeats a boss like that. And now he just bounces on Papu Papu's belly to exit the hut. That's pretty clever. And I quite like that. That's pretty funny. Okay, guys. Right. I think what I'm going to do is... I think that'll be a good time to end off the first part of the End Saint Trilogy. I know this is quite a short part, but it's still uh, good to get the first part out there and uh, just let, let it go out there. But one thing I wanted to explain was this hidden bit right here. Now this is Coco's time machine. Now if we go to this, do you want her to join your adventure? Absolutely. Yes. I will definitely have Coco join my adventure. So now I can play as Coco in certain levels. With the exception of the boss levels, I cannot play as Coco whatsoever in the boss levels. Or in the boss fight should I say. But I think on that note, guys, I think I'll end off the first part right here. So thank you all very much for watching the first part of Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy. This is the uh, first part of Crash Bandicoot 1, the Insane Trilogy. Uh, please feel free to like if you enjoyed the video, comment in below for your thoughts. And also please feel free to hit that subscribe button for more upcoming Insane Trilogy parts in the future. So until then, guys, this is Quine Game here signing off. Have a great day wherever you are, and I shall speak to you later when I come back for the second part of the Insane Trilogy. So I'll see you guys then. Till then, goodbye.